Uh, I don't think you're on mic, Cynthia. I don't think that one's on. I'm just gonna scream. Uh, we're AJ and Cynthia from Inner Space, week 96 on space. Anyone see our, uh, our episode on Friday where we had our special guest there? Hands up if you saw it on Friday. It got a we little here. intimate, so perhaps that will continue on stage. We'll see. Uh, yeah, let's do our introduction for our guest. All right. The man you're about to meet is an accomplished singer and musical theater performer, but we know him best as the roguish Captain Jack Harkness. <laughs> And his spin-up was so popular, he, he was so popular that he uh, was a spin-off show called Torchwood. As the 10th Doctor once said, he's a 51st century guy who's just a bit more flexible when it comes to dancing. Please welcome John Bellman! Excuse me, fucking awesome. I apologize now for that, for uh, swearing, but you know, I am what I am and you just get over it. <laughs> oh, you're gonna, what? Where are you going? You got my problems? It's the first time you've ever had a problem holding something like that in your hands. But you seem to be okay with it. It's Sunday. How's everybody doing? I just have to say that it, uh, thank you very much for the huge, huge response uh, uh, you've given me here in uh, Toronto. I, I have been to Toronto before. It's the first time I've done Fan Expo. Uh, I've been asked a few times to come, but I can guarantee you if I'm asked again, I will be back. Torchwood questions, but let's open with what you're about to work on. Great, which is Arrow. Arrow! And I know they just were, you were just upstairs with them. I, I went in and did an intro for a screening that, that happened. I believe they're doing their Q&A right now. So oh, they are. Space. So they're competing. I wonder who's got the bigger crowd. <laughs> no, I hope you all watch it because it's... um. It's, uh, uh, I can't really tell you that much about it, but uh, uh, I'm just being called, my character is called the well-dressed man. Yeah! All right! I think you can handle that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can handle it. Uh, but it will be, there'll be more revealed about him. He'll be pivotal in the, the program. And uh, yeah, it's uh, something that I'm very excited about. I fly up to, uh, I fly back to Los Angeles this afternoon and then I have an, an overnight in LA and then I fly up to Vancouver tomorrow morning and I start shooting again tomorrow morning. So it's a busy schedule, but I'm, I'm really excited. It came out of the blue, it came from left field and uh, they rang me and asked me if I would, this is what's great, would you like to play the character on this new show? And I was like, yeah, I mean, come on. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be going into another kind of realm of, uh, you know, fiction, sci-fi, and fantasy, and stuff like that, so it's really cool. Time to create another cool character. We want to talk about one of your coolest characters ever. Go on. Um, the, the ever-eager Captain Jack flirted with every woman, man, robot, alien, Yes, yes. He, lo he loves an eager beaver. <laughs> And you got a lot of them here in Canada, let me tell you. How much of, of, of John is in Jack? <laughs> oh my! Yeah, careful with that. My Do you want to rephrase that? Uh, there's, there's a, 
The one thing that I always uh, feel when you're playing a, a character, I, I hate using the word character because I know a lot of other actors get up and they go, you know, the motivation behind it is really feeling, you know, what's inside. Shut the hell up. <laughs> For people to like you and your character on television, you have to put an element of yourself into that character. And I, I'm proud to, that Russell and Stephen Moffat and everybody, and, you know, Jane Espens and, and everyone who was involved in the writings for Captain Jack, they got to know me first. And then they put my personality, part of it, into Jack. So there's a lot of Jack in John and a lot of John in Jack. <laughs> You know, personality-wise, because you all know me from, I mean, I, I mean, I assume you do from either, you know, TV or books or interviews, and you know that I am kind of like Jack and the, his wit and his, uh, uh, his sexuality and all that kind of stuff, but the only thing I don't do is walk around the street shooting people in the head. <laughs> Although it seems to be a thing right now on the news, uh, yeah. But um, so that's it. I think that's important, and that's what makes the the characters and the the character in shows for you guys good because you get to see personality rather than something that is created. <laughs> well, we're fast approaching the uh, the fiftieth anniversary of Doctor Who. Uh -huh. uh, Stephen Moffat, now the man in charge. Yeah. that you had some creative control over the 50th anniversary episode. How would you like to see Captain Jack return, uh, you know, and hang out with the Doctor? Is there a particular adventure you'd like to see them take on or something? I, well, I've got to be honest with you, I haven't really thought about that. And, and just on the top, off the top of my head, uh, you know, Matt Smith, I did meet Matt Smith before he, you know, hit, well, I knew he had got the role of the Doctor. We knew what was going on. Obviously, we know a lot before you do. <laughs> Um, and I sat down at a table with them at the BBC in one of the press offices and just had a chat. And we both said it would be great if our, his, you know, his doctor and Jack crossed and, and met. Um, I don't know, I think it would be interesting to see if he would come and find Jack on planet Earth. You know, it's, 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 it's difficult because we try not to cross, Jack can cross over, but the doctor can't cross into Torchwood. He just can't. It's not, it's an, in our world, it's not allowed. Um, uh, so I think he would, if he would find him, he'd travel back in time and find Jack somewhere maybe chained up. <laughs> surviving. Or go to the future. What might be interesting is to, you know, go to the future and see how he becomes the face of Bo. Now that's just my little thing. Don't anybody go online and go, John Barrowman says that Matt Smith's yeah, doctor is gonna be, and they're gonna become the face of Bo. Blah, blah, blah. It's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. <laughs> but I have to say that so I clear myself of all. <laughs> we are gonna throw it out to the audience, but I just wanna ask one question. If you had to choose, who is your favorite doctor? Don't even Come see, on. gosh darn it. Come on. Like I'm gonna answer that. Not, not even <laughs> no, I, no, 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 listen, you'll all understand this. I love the, I love the, the, the Doctor Who experience, I love the show, but the, I have to say my doctor is uh, David Tennant. <laughs> Otherwise known as David Tennant. <laughs> we both wear the same size shoe. <laughs> What point do I break, break, break gays? gays? Don't, no. don't, no, don't fight with gays. Because we will break you. On that Actually, note. I don't know. On that note. <laughs> on that note. Yeah. Questions from the audience. That's, oh my gosh. Well, there's a board right there in the front Let's row. Shout out loud. I was just wondering if during the show Arrow, if we're finally going to see you naked. <laughs> Well, you've already seen me naked in, in Torchwood and in Doctor Who. What do you want to see me naked again for in Arrow? Um, I don't know. Uh, listen, I, I, you know, 
I'll leave the nakedness up to Steve. How, how can you be the well-dressed man if you're undressed? Correct. <laughs> Well, then they have a term in, in England, it's which way do you dress? You didn't get that, did you? Dress to the left or the right, get it? Never mind. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I hope there's no nude scenes because I got a love handles that I got to get rid of first. And to compete with the, the, the Steve who plays the lead in it, um, he's got like a 52 pack. And he's awesome. Yeah, awesome. And it's in my contract that he must be naked every time around me. He, he doesn't know that yet, but... <laughs> okay, uh, keep calm, and I'm not quite sure where that's going. Keep calm and... Don't blank! Okay. Oh, um, it's... Oh, thanks. Um, this is not really a question. It's more of a comment. Okay, next. Anyway. <laughs> A couple months ago, I was bound to a wheelchair, and I was in a wheelchair for a very long time. And I recently just got out of it, and while I was in my wheelchair, I couldn't really leave the house. So I would watch Doctor Who and Torchwood, yeah. and it gave me that escape. So I really just wanted to say thank you for giving me that option. You're welcome. You're welcome, but it's you who basically did all the hard work. And if you were housebound, you should have just stuck some black cardboard over yourself in the wheelchair and become a doll like it would have been fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it fun, doesn't it? Yeah? Have you done that yet? Anybody? No? <laughs> Do it. It'll, it's, it's great. Well, these are, these are conventions where people who are passionate about, you know, various entertainments come to, uh, you know, anime, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what is your geek out thing at the moment? What are you passionate about these days? Oh, I've got a lot. Well, I've got a lot of geek out things. I mean, I'm uh, I, I buy a lot of collectible stuff. I do. Uh, I, I collect character dolls uh, from uh, shows, and also uh, at the moment I'm really big into the. They're, they're selling them out there. You know, the pint glasses with the uh, with you know Batman and Superman and all the different characters on them, and uh, they just released Josie the Pussycat. <laughs> So I bought Josie and the Pussycats, and I also got, um, they, they did some of the Archie characters, and uh, I got some of those. Uh, what else? T-shirts are always my big thing. I, I, every time I do a convention, I go, I, I walk the floor, I don't go in disguise. I mean, I'm sure some of you saw me walking over the last couple of days. Um, and everybody's cool, they let me do my thing because they know I'm a big geek myself. Right. So I buy t-shirts, and then when I take them back, uh, you know, to the hotel, Scott rifles through them and gets the ones that he wants. <laughs> and, uh, usually the, they're the ones that I want, so there ends up being a big fight, but then that leads into something else that's really <laughs> a lot of fun. And we wear the t-shirts, and then we pretend we're the superheroes, and it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Any, I know we're doing some of the Get some from the back. Okay. Yeah? Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, hi. First of all, massive, massive fan of everything. Torture with Doctor Who. I'm just... I am so glad. I'm actually shaking right now. You're shaking. Yeah. Don't pee oh. yourself. <laughs> I am not into that. Uh, not to spoil the illusion for anyone, but obviously when you guys all cram into that blue box, you're not actually... <laughs> Walking into a room that's bigger on the inside. I was wondering if you have. <laughs> I don't know what planet you're on, but we are. I was wondering if you had any uh, funny or awkward stories of being crammed in a tiny blue box with uh, yeah, David yeah. Freeman. <laughs> yeah, Dave and Freeman. I yeah, Dave Freeman used to hate being in the box with Dave. Well. <laughs> She's not that kind of girl. <laughs> um, no, we, David and I with Freema, we used to get in and David and I would just start farting. <laughs> and she's going, ah! She never, Freema never swore or anything like that, but David, I would look at David and I'd go, you ready? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and she'd just go, oh, you guys are sick. <laughs> And action. That's why she always comes out of the, the TARDIS looking like she's just freaked. She's going, ah! <laughs> and, that, and, and then those episodes, and when we would do that, we would call it the TARDIS. <laughs> yes, the Doctor and Jack farting their way through time. Awesome. 
<laughs> Angela, okay, you're, yes. Hi, big Hi. fan. Um, I was wondering, uh, due to the huge recent population of fans in America, we've had a lot of increase in support with BBC, with BBC America releasing Doctor Who at the same time. I'm wondering, do you think this is going to lead possibly to an American or a Canadian having a role as a companion or even as the Doctor? I, I'm sure it could happen. I mean, look, I grew up, I, you know, I am British by birth, but I grew up in America and I was in the TARDIS, so you had uh, Tegan in the past who was Australian. You've, um, you know, you've had different actors and actresses who play stuff. Of course there's room for Canadian, and I think it would be... A, the one thing that is great about uh, sort of the fan world and, and uh, sci-fi world at the moment, it is becoming more international, and you also have to play those things for other networks. Look, you know, I'm going to be an arrow, but I'm not stupid. I know that I'm on there, and I'm going to direct... You know, hopefully you guys will come along to watch it, so they've got a huge audience going to come to their show right away. I, I, that's me talking smart business. So obviously, if BBC America or B, the BBC in the UK or BBC Worldwide want to further the shows and make them more popular in the different countries, of course they could bring in a Canadian. I think it'd be great. Just make sure he or she is hot. <laughs> and they are a lumberjack. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good, a lesbian lumberjack in the title? the lesbians yeah just choose better shoes okay <laughs> I love it okay who's next right down there go ahead speak up uh, well first off uh, I just wanted to thank you as a as a queer woman uh, see what? Uh oh, uh oh, a queer woman who's not good holding big things in her hand. <laughs> Unless they're plastic. <laughs> oh, shut up. You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't act shocked. I'm, I'm talking like about big hero, pens. So. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, sweetheart. And I'm dressed as a lesbian superhero, so. Lots of issues. <laughs> utility belt. Speak up. <laughs> Speak up and hold that close to your mouth. <laughs> no, seriously, go. Um, I was just uh, wondering, uh, just uh, with genre, seems to have a lot more uh, queer characters than mainstream things. And I was wondering if you had any particular favorites out of, you know, sci-fi, comics, that sort of thing. Well, I actually have to contradict you there because actually mainstream has more gay characters on television than sci-fi. And uh, sci-fi does have a lot, this genre has a lot. We were the first ones really to do it, yeah. so to speak. But um, it's, it's uh, I don't know, I, it's, things are changing. People are, you know, people are become, writers who are coming up are like us. Uh, you know, we're not uh, afraid anymore to sit inside a closet or say who we are. So. Writers and actors, uh, not so much actors, you know, like myself, but a lot uh, are not, some are still not coming out of the closet. But what my kind of big thing is, and this is where I'm so proud of uh, Captain Jack, I'm proud of what Russell and uh, Stephen and uh, Julie Gardner and the BBC allowed me to help create, was the, the fact that I'm a hero. I'm not a flouncing queen. Who, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong, but there's, there's a very diverse group of gay men and women out there, and we need to be represented on television in the proper way. We don't need to all be stereotyped on television, uh, and that's what happens in mainstream. And unfortunately, certain audience, you know, audiences around the world only identify with types. But for the writers and people who are creating new shows and doing things differently and putting and breaking those stereotypes, those are the shows that we should stand by and, and, and stand up for and watch and, and be proud of. So uh, anyway. Do you, um, just on that note, do you still find it's difficult in I mean, mainstream uh, world in Hollywood? It still seems like it's hard for a lot of men to come out and then be able to be active in you know, mainstream roles. 
I don't know how to answer that because I'm, I, I don't give a shit what other people think. <laughs>